Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today on Keto Monday, we're gonna talk about carb creep. Now what is that, carb creep? It's exactly what it sounds like. It's letting too many carbs or more carbs than you're wanting creeping into your diet, into your meals, into your schedule. And that will stall you or stop your weight loss faster than anything I can think of. Carb creep is real, and these are things you gotta look at. So I have a list of places that carbs can creep in that maybe we're not paying attention to. And so I thought we could talk about those today. Yes, I'm still doing keto, and I will bring some cooking back. I just have been kind of in a cooking slump. This week I'm having chicken thighs and Brussels sprouts. I mean, I just make the chicken thighs and I roasted some Brussels sprouts and that's lunch. And breakfast is going to be some andouille sausage and cheese. So I'm kind of myself dialing it back to basics. So I thought, you know, let's talk about some other things on Keto Monday as well. So we're, we know where the major carbohydrates come from. Flours, bread, sweets, candies, blah, blah. We know all that. But a place that carbs can creep that maybe we're not paying too much attention to are brands. The brand of what dairy we're buying. Let's say um, cream cheese, for example. I was at Walmart today and, you know, I want to save money like everybody else. So I picked up the Walmart brand of cream cheese because it was like less than a dollar, I think, on sale today. And the Philadelphia was $1.96. So I'm like, oh, here's a place I can save some money. So I picked up the Walmart two carbs per serving. I mean, that sound like a lot, but when you're trying to stay under seven carbs per meal, that's a lot for two tablespoons serving. Uh, Philadelphia cream cheese has multiple different ones. The low fat variety has higher carbs. Um, the five simple ingredients is the one we're wanting and that has zero carbohydrates. Um, so you really have to look at brands. The less expensive items, tend to have more fillers to make them stretch longer further so they can charge less money for them. That's kind of how it, it works. Um, the Aldi brand, I believe, has one carbohydrate per serving and the, well, the Walmart has two, the Aldi brand has one, and Philadelphia, the five simple ingredient one has one, zero carbohydrates. So that's a place that carbohydrates can creep in. Now there was a moment in time where Philadelphia cream cheese, before they went with the five simple label, changed up their formula and they went from zero carbs to one carb per serving. It doesn't sound like a lot, again, but there was nothing on there that said, hey, we changed our formula. So you always just have to read your ingredients and read your carbohydrate list. So that is one big place, is brand, being you know brand specific. Um, things like, meat chicken beef pork we'll stick with those three you think you know do you have to buy organic do you have to buy all natural no you don't have to but you got to read your ingredient labels chicken is a big one that they inject it with a solution the solution could be salt water but it could have fillers and and things sugars in them that they inject the chicken to keep them more moist it's really a big thing of chicken breast um so that's a place where you you know, people are like, well, I gotta buy organic and all natural. Well, in that situation, it is beneficial to buy something that's all natural because they're not injecting it with anything or brining it or soaking it. It's just chicken breast. Um, it's the same thing with rotisserie chickens. They inject those birds with flavorings. We don't know what's in the flavoring, but they inject them with it. So you really wanna watch for those things. Um, Convenience foods, I guess, is going to be a big one. Convenience foods, again, are going to be questionable. So you have to read your labels. Read your ingredients. Read your labels. We'll talk about in a minute what ingredients you really want to steer clear of. But So that's why I like to buy organic meat, and that's, I think, why a lot of keto folks talk about organic and all natural, because they're not injected with anything. I don't think it's as much beef, but I have definitely seen it in pork and chicken. Um, nuts and nut flour. Yes, nuts are great. They're, they're good for you. They're a good source of fat, but you can go from a healthy serving to way overboard really fast. I believe a quarter of a cup, or is it 
an eighth of a cup of peanuts has six carbs. That's a lot of carbs for a little amount of nut. So peanut butter, peanuts, walnuts, almonds, hazelnuts, they're really good and they're a good source of fat, but you've gotta be super careful of your portioning and possibly like weighing them or measuring them out just so you're not letting that creep in. Peanut butter is a big one. I mean, a tablespoon of peanut, two tablespoons of peanut butter, I think, is 13 carbs? I don't know, I have to look that one up. Don't quote me on that one. But there is a fair amount of carbs in nuts and nut butter. So just be careful. You can have it, but that is certainly something you want to moderate. Um, and I think that's what folks think about on keto. There is really no free food. There's nothing that you can just continually graze on besides water. I mean, everything will bring some type of a carbohydrate to the table. Um, fruits is another thing. Fruits are not a free food. I mean, you can have one or two strawberries. I know strawberries are one carb per strawberry. So keep that in mind. And for a lot of folks, fruits and dessert type things trigger that sugar craving again and get you back on board with the sweets and the car, you know, get you back on board with that. So you kind of want to avoid it if you think that's going to be an issue for you. Um, I'm just reading my list here. Serving size is another thing and that kind of goes with the nuts. So if a package of hot dogs and you get the all beef and it's one carbohydrate per hot dog, but you eat three hot dogs, you kind of, you got to make sure you're counting all three of those carbs. I know it sounds basic and logical, but again, just knowing that there's one carb per serving, but you got to be very cognizant of what the serving in is, is, and that still goes back to reading your labels. Um, yes. Now, what are we looking for on the labels? For me personally, now I do, as I've said before, clean keto. I don't net my carbs. So a carb is a carb. If it's 10 carbs and seven fibers, it's still 10 carbs. I don't net it down to three. That's how I do keto. So when I'm looking at the label, I'm looking at whole carbs, but I'm also looking at the ingredients. Um, obviously the other things you're looking for is sugar, but you're also looking for things that, that have gluten, things um, like tapioca, thickeners. So sweeteners that you really want to avoid that are in a lot of foods, malodextrin, dextrose, sucralose. Sucralose is the technical name for Splenda. Splenda has dextrin in it, aspartame. Those are artificial sweeteners. Yes, there's zero calories, but they still trigger your body's insulin response, which triggers your body then to hold fat. So that's kind of the whole thing with keto is keeping your blood sugar even because spikes tell your body, hey, create insulin. And then it's telling your body, hold on to fat, you know? And so those are things you're trying to avoid. And as a diabetic, it's very important to me to keep my blood sugars even as possible because that in long term can cause kidney damage, liver damage. You know, there's a lot of internal organs that are not happy when it comes time to like sugar spikes and lows, you know, highs and lows. So that is definitely something you want to look at. Um, honestly, the, the three sweeteners that I use, and I only use two of them, but the three really that are all natural that do not spike blood sugar is erythritol. And erythritol by itself has that cooling taste where it makes it, if you ever brush your teeth and then drink orange juice, it's kind of that cooling sensation. That's erythritol. Stevia by itself has like a bitter aftertaste. Um, the two of them together cancel each other out. So the brand name I use is Whole Earth or sweet temptation in the packets. But here's where reading labels comes into play. At Aldi, they sell sweet temptations in a packet. It's a green little envelope. It's strictly erythritol and stevia. It's great. Then on the shelf, they have a bag of sweet additions. If I say temptations, it's sweet additions. They have a bag of sweet additions. Yes, great, it's a big bag. It'll help me, you know, with baking and stuff. No, they add malodextrin and dextrose I believe to that so they're adding fillers and artificial sweeteners to stretch it and bulk it up so you really I mean you really really have to look at the packaging there is one brand true maybe I can't remember the name of it that the powder has dextrose in it but the liquid drops is just erythritol and stevia 
So you really, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Even with a specific brand, you've got to read the packaging. Now, the third type of sweetener is xylitol. It's X-Y-T-O-L, I believe. That is good, and it's very sweet, and it works, but it's toxic to animals, so I won't bring that in my house. I don't buy xylitol. I don't buy, I don't use things that are sweetened with xylitol because it's toxic to animals, and I have two cats and a dog part-time. She's with me frequently, and I'm not taking any chances. So I stick with Lakanto. Oh, and that's the other one, monk fruit. So I stick with Lakanto monk fruit sweetener or erythritol stevia blend. Monk fruit's natural as well. It doesn't spike your blood sugar, and they sell it at Costco, or I order it on Amazon, and it's L-A-K-A-N-T-O. I should take you with me to to Costco when I do my monthly stock up. I need to get some sweetener here soon. So we'll go and I'll show you. Because I get the whole Earth sweetener packets. It's a 400 packet box for $12. And then a one and a half pound bag of the Lakanto sweetener is $8.99 at Costco. So you just, I guess the end result here is watch your ingredients, watch your carbs. Now, the other place that I find carb creep is the holidays coming up and having all this temptation. And I'm not even sure if this is included in carb creep or if this is just straight up, you know, poor choices. But a bite here, a bite there could constitute creep. Um, with the holidays coming, my what I do around the holidays, this will be my third Christmas season that, or Thanksgiving holidays that we're going into. I stock my freezer with baked goods that I can have. I, you know, make some cookies or I'll make some cakes or whatever. And if I go to a party and there's going to be treats there, I bring my own. My family knows me, my friends. They know I'm keto. This is not a big deal. I baked an entire lemon cake for my family. And then I brought a piece of lemon pound cake that I made for myself and busted that out. Nobody cares. I mean, there's no need to be embarrassed. You can't have it. You can't have it. Um, so I make sure that I have things around my house that I can have during the holiday season. And the same thing goes with going out to restaurants. No, I don't bring food to restaurants, but I also don't eat out a whole lot. Um, you know, there are apps that will tell you for fast food, you know, I can go to Kentucky Fried Chicken and get grilled chicken and green beans, and that's, you know, fine. But if I went to a steakhouse, I don't know what they're putting on this food. I don't know what, yes, I can ask for no sauce, but you don't know what is it's being cooked in and all of that. And so for me, it's just best not to go out a whole bunch. I do, and if I do, I tend to get hamburger with, you know, pickles and lettuce and mustard, and then a side of broccoli, plain. I mean, that is it exciting? No, but it's safe. But those are the places that carb creep can stick ya every time. Um, and then the last place, drinks. So I'm having iced coffee right now. I made this at home. It's not the flavored syrups. It is flavored coffee and it's unsweetened flavored coffee and it's my heavy cream and my whole earth. And then I threw some ice cubes in it because it was cold anyway. Um, going to Starbucks, you know, all of their flavorings have artificial sweeteners of some sort in them that are not ideal. Um, I will tell you a place that doesn't is Dunkin' Donuts. Their unsweet, their sugar-free sweeteners are unsweetened. There's no sweetener to them. It's just flavor, which is super exciting for me. So I can go and get an iced coffee with hazelnut, and I just keep some whole earth in my car, and I sweeten it to my liking, and they put cream in it for me, and it's delicious. And it's unsweetened, so I really wish other places would go to that. Um, you know, those skinny syrups, the Tarani's and all of that. I mean, they are sugar free, but I would highly recommend testing your blood sugar after um, you do that to make sure you're not getting a sugar spike. So the way to do it is fasting. So you wake up in the morning, make a cup of coffee, put your whatever in it. Check, before you drink it, check your blood sugar, write that number down. An hour later, don't eat or drink anything besides your cup of coffee. And you don't want to keep sipping on it. Drink whatever you're drinking and then don't have anything. For an hour, then check your blood sugar again. If it goes up, 
or if it significantly goes down because now you're incurring insulin resistance. But if you're not diabetic and it goes up, then I think it's more than 20 points in an hour or two hours. So up to two hours. You want to check it at an hour, check it at two hours. If it goes up more than 20 points, your blood sugar numbers, it's affecting you and it's spiking your blood sugar. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, I hope this was helpful. If it was, let me know, like, subscribe, share, hit that subscribe button. All right, everybody. Well, you have a happy Monday, and I will talk to you later. Bye.